Ladies and gentlemen, um, our guest today uh, was uh, one of the finest footballing centre halves in, in the English game for a long time. Uh, 28 England caps, should have been, could have been more, could have been more. Played nearly 500 times for Derby County. A um, uh, few injuries, and we'll come to one injury in particular in a few minutes, Roy. Um, moved into management Bradford City, then to Derby, um, and became a manager there in October 93. Uh, then it was Bolton in a joint managership with Colin Todd, his old, uh, his old partner. We're taking up to 1996 now when um, Tommy Taylor left this football club and um, Roy came to join us. That was November 96. And we had some great times during Roy's uh, managership. Uh, especially remember that great League Cup run that ended on penalties at Nottingham Forest. But... Um, that same season, of course, Roy led the team to uh, promotion to, I still call it Division 3, it was Division 2, uh, with, a, with a result at Rochdale that many people remember. Lots more people seem to have been there than um, was, was actually in the crowd, but um, it, was, it was tricky always having to sell players, I think that's uh, fair to say, isn't it? Tricky financially, and um, I suppose the writing was on the wall when with the Trevor Benjamin thing in the summer of uh, 2000, uh, 2000, yeah. And um, the Hughes and Roy sadly parted company in 2001. You then went on to Torquay, then Chesterfield, Bill's old club. And uh, the last time we came across Roy in a managerial capacity was of course when he took over at Burton Albion from um, Nigel, young Nigel. Nigel Clough, and um, oh, we came so close that season, didn't we? Yes. <laughs> anyway, one more round of applause for Mr. Roy McFarland. <laughs> thanks for being with us, Roy. But I, I, as I said, I wanted to allude at the first question to a, a particular game. It's Wembley, it's 1974, and you're playing for England against Northern Ireland. Now, you came up against uh, a bloke we know a bit about, we, our own Sammy, Big Sammy Morgan. Would you like to tell us what happened when he went into a challenge with Sammy that day? Do you remember? Yeah, uh, never forget that day. Um, Pleased, funny enough, that, that uh, I was partnered in a sense with, with Colin Todd. I hadn't played many times with Colin, my Derby teammate alongside me. Uh, playing for England. I'd played probably 16, 17, 18 times alongside probably the greatest English player, Bobby Moore, which is a great thing and I, I enjoyed those times and the experience of it was excellent. And it, it's amazing that um, we won the World Cup in 66 and five of those players I actually played with at England at various times when I got my first cap in 71. You know, and that was Gordon Banks in goal, uh, Bobby Moore alongside me, Alan Ball, Martin Peters, and uh, Jeff Hurst, obviously, who scored the hat-trick in, in 1966, um, up front. And it was a privilege for me to join that sort of community of players that Alf Ramsey had. And the best thing about it, that he, for a young player who's progressing and I played for the under 23s to be called up for the England team you know was obviously a great honor but the, those players those particular players made me feel really comfortable and I settled into the England team quite well uh, and I enjoyed it I loved it and I loved the experience sadly we didn't qualify for the 74 uh, World Cup finals that were played in Germany uh, that was based on the fact that we Drew with Poland at, at Wembley, which was a very disappointing night for all of us. We felt that we should have qualified. And to be fair to Poland, they went on and finished in third place that year. So I think we'd have done, or we'd have hoped to have done a little bit better. But it didn't happen for us. But uh, that night at Wembley, playing against Sammy Morgan, it had nothing to do with Sammy, funny enough. Sammy was, was genuine and 
Um, I think we were comfortably into the game and doing quite well. And it was just the back end of the first half. I, I I, I, Sammy went for the ball, I went for the ball, and I jumped up. And as I jumped up, I felt something go in my ankle. I headed the ball, won the ball, and then fell down, and then everything seemed to go. And I thought, for a moment, I'd broken my ankle. I thought that it all shattered or something had happened to it. And what it was, uh, Les Cocker, who was Don Revy's assistant, but Alf's physio, in a sense, uh, for England, uh, got me up and said, stand up on your feet. And I'll demonstrate in a sense, I, I got me to my feet. I, I realized then I've not broken my ankle. And he said, Roy, just walk. He stood away, he said, just walk to me. And as I put my foot down, it gave way. And I, even then I didn't realize what I'd done. And Les said to me, Roy, I think you've snapped your Achilles. And uh, Within hours, and I say within hours, because after the game I went straight to the hospital and uh, when, I, when I was uh, carried into the, uh, the room, there was nobody else in the room, there was a huge room in, in uh, Stanmore Hospital and all of a sudden four doctors, young doctors appeared and they said, Roy, Roy, we, we've seen the incident on television, we've just watched it now, that's why we're a little bit late getting to you and I was I'm lying on this bloody bed and they, they'd been watch, they wanted to watch the incident and uh, we, we've seen what's happened obviously it, it's your Achilles and so on so the next thing is the main doctor walked in the surgeon and his name was Dr. Tricky and as it was I was he said as as I was lying down I saw him come through the door and he said gentlemen turn him over onto his front so I lay on my front and he just scores my calf and he said, gentlemen, get him ready for the theatre. And, and I didn't really speak to the surgeon until after, the, well, the following day, the following, because it was on, in the evening, obviously. And it was about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, midday, when he came round to visit everything, and he saw me. And what was the major shock to me, he said, Roy, he said, this won't be a, a month or two month job. He said, you will not be playing football for six months. And I was... I remember when he said that, I was absolutely shocked and I was absolutely devastated. I had no idea how long this would be. The sad thing is, it didn't take six months to get me back playing football. It took probably about nine months in terms of trying to get back to a standard. And in trying to get to, back to a standard, I put so much pressure by using my other foot. Um, I'll give you a demonstration. In those days, there was no remote control to turn the television over. So every time I wanted to turn the television over, I'd get up, I'd hop on my other foot, turn it over, and hop back. And if I didn't enjoy that program, I'd sit down. I thought, sure, I'm not enjoying this, so I'd get up again. <laughs> so very quickly, after nine months, I had another operation on my other Achilles. And he opened it up, had a look at it, and he said I only had a partial tear, which meant, he said it was about a third to a half, he said, but I left it alone, he says, but sadly, you've got to go through the same process. And I did, so it's the same time scale, roughly about three months in terms of the hard work that you need. So I had two Achilles operations on, on the bounce. And to be fair, I'll be truthful in that sense, and I've said that in my book and things, that I never really came back with the same sharpness. And I mean, I could read the game like, a, like, like, like I thought I could, and... I could anticipate things, but the sad thing, I was just about, I was half a yard short. So I wasn't, from 12 months, 18 months earlier, I wasn't the same player. I knew I wasn't the same player, but I actually got back in through Don Revy. With Don, when Don took over, he asked me to join the England squad. I joined them, and I got six more caps playing for England. So I, I had 22 when I'd, when I'd snapped it, and I got six more under Don Revy. But I wasn't the player I was. Well, well, let's sound me off then. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the few players, you were one of the few players you didn't get, I think. Anyway, look, let's uh, have a question from the audience, please. We do have a roving mic here. If you'd like to put your hand up if you have a question. Okay. Roy, I believe that uh, when you actually signed for Derby County from Tranmere, I think it was, um, you, were, you, you had a knock on your door on a Saturday night and uh, 
a certain Mr. Clough was waiting there. Can you tell us that story? Yeah. Um, I played against, I think I think it may have been well been <coughs> Reading. We, we, we played Reading at uh, Prenton Park, which was Tramway Road. It was the, we got promoted in my first season in football. We, I started football at Tramway Rovers in the fourth division. That first season, my first season, um, we got promotion uh, to the old third division. And our first game of the season, we played Torquay away. And that was a hell of a long journey down to Torquay. But little did I know that Peter Taylor had come to watch me. While he, Brian Clough and him were managers at uh, Hartlepool, I think Bill's got a good story about dealing with Brian Clough when he was manager at Hartlepool, but um, Peter Taylor came to see me because when I played against Hartlepool, they'd quite like what they saw, so Pete followed it up when, he, when they'd taken the job at Derby County. I didn't know that, didn't understand that, and didn't really want to know about it because Brian Clough and Peter Taylor were the furthest people in my mind. All I wanted to do was get on my career at, at Tranmere Rovers, but the second game in, was on a Friday night. We always played our home games at Tramier on a Friday night. So I played the game on Friday night. My cousin came to the game. I caught, I, I, I caught the bus back to the uh, train station. I went underground to Liverpool, which is where I lived. We went for a pint in the pub in the centre of Liverpool and then caught the bus to home. And I was in bed probably round about 11, 11.30. And by that time I was shattered, I was tired. I'd gone to sleep. About one o'clock, uh, my mother was shaking me and saying, you'd better come downstairs. There's a man downstairs that wants to see you. I said, who's that? He said, you're, well, your manager's there, Dave Russell, and a man called Brian Clough. And of course, I knew about Brian Clough because I followed football and he, he played for England. I didn't realize that he was manager of Derby County at the time, and I didn't realize he'd managed Hartlepool United, who had played the previous season for, for Tranmere Rovers. Anyway, so this is Saturday morning, one o'clock in the morning, I've come down and I've got my best pyjamas on. <laughs> and when I come in, into my lounge, the first thing my mother says, Brian, Peter, Dave Russell, Dave, would, would you like a cup of tea? Yes, they had a cup of tea. So I sat down and they explained everything to me. Dave Russell said, Roy, Derby County wants to sign you. We've agreed a fee. If you want to sign for them, you, they've got the forms, you need to sign them. If you don't, I'll see you on Monday morning for training. And Dave Russell left the house. So I've now got Brian Clough and Peter Taylor. My mother comes in again. Brian, would you like another pot of tea? Love another cup of tea, Mrs. McFarlane. So this went on for about an hour, an hour and a half. So we're nearly into, we're not at three o'clock yet, but we're getting close to three o'clock in the morning. And I'm just, I just don't want to make a decision. There's only one club I want to play for, and that's Liverpool Football Club. I'm a Shankly man. Liverpool was my team. Everton was my father's team, so we had a split in the family, and all I wanted to do was play for Liverpool Football Club, and all I wanted to do was play for Bill Shankly. But these two men wouldn't give in. And I wouldn't give in as well, because I said, Mr. Clough, I want to stay. I want to, I want to think about it over the weekend, and then I'll give you my answer on Monday. I think they must have known by my reaction that my reaction on Monday was already made up. I didn't want to sign for Derby County Football Club. They asked me again, come on Roy, let's get something sorted out. We're not leaving this house till you make a decision tonight. And it better be the right decision. That's the way Brian was. <laughs> I turned around to my father and I said, Dad, what do you think? He said, if they want you that badly, son, I think you should sign. It, by me saying that, Peter Taylor, Brian Clough were off out of the seat, they were out to me, and Peter Taylor put the forms in front of me, and I kid you not, there's the forms, and the first thing Peter Taylor said to me, listen to your father, listen to what he said, and, sign this thing. <laughs> and I sat there in my best pyjamas, thinking, no, I'm not going to sign them. Peter Taylor put a pen in my hand, he said, listen to your father, he said, sign those forms. And I kid you not, I've got the pen in my hand and Peter Taylor's signing whatever it's signed. <laughs> and he won't let go. So that's one form, then the next form came up. The next form, they moved them on, the next form, so and so, so and so. The minute those forms were signed, both of them said, Right, we'll see you Monday morning. 
get down to, we had a game on Monday evening. He said, get down for around about midday. He said, uh, bring your mother and father with you. And uh, we're, off, we're off back to Derby because they, they, they played at home that, that Saturday. So that was it. I was, I, I, I'd committed it, I'd signed, and I thought I'd made the biggest mistake of my life. And I went to watch Liverpool on Saturday, because that was my team. They were playing Newcastle United. Tony Hately was making his debut for Liverpool. He scored a hat-trick and Liverpool won 5-0. And I'm standing on the cop, and I turn around to my, to my cousin, who had been with me the night before, I said, I've made the biggest, excuse my language, cock up I've ever done in my life. I don't know what I've done. John, I can't believe it. And the sad thing is, I can't get out of it. But in truth, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. Because going there, working with Brian and Peter, you knew things were going to happen. You knew things were going to change. You knew the club was going to change. You knew the players were going to change. Um, John O'Hare was the first signing, and he'd, he'd signed the week before me, and I'd signed a week later. The next thing is Alan Hinton came in the next month, so you knew things were changing, and they, they, were, they were wanting things to change. And of course, the best signing I think that Derby ever made was the start of the following season, and that's when they signed Dave Mackay from Tottenham Hotspur. What a player, what a, what a player, the best player probably that I played with. I think I'd put that alongside Colin Todd. Me and Toddy were a great partnership. We complemented each other. But I played alongside a guy who was 34, who could pass the ball better than anybody, could pass the ball better than Bobby Moore, could tackle certainly better than Bobby Moore, and led Tottenham to the double, uh, played for Scotland and captain Scotland, an incredible player who led us, who, the team, absolutely admired him, we followed him, and he led us along the path, and eventually we got promoted, obviously, into the old first division. Excellent. Right, do you still want to answer the question? <coughs> right, t tell us your name first. Ellie. Right, Ellie, what, what do you want to ask Roy? Um, what was your favourite, what was your first favourite football player when you were younger? Good one. Good one. Well, yeah, the first player that I, I think, I think all of us as kids, I think we always, we never enjoyed left backs or right backs or centre halves. They, they were good, but they weren't important. The most important thing in a football club was the guy who scored the goals. And for Liverpool Football Club at that particular time, the centre forward was Billy Little, who was my first hero. And Billy Little played for Scotland, he played on the left wing for Scotland, and he played centre forward for them. Um, so he was, he was my real hero. But during that spell as well, we then signed another centre forward from Scotland. And I'm trying to think of his name now as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, can you? <laughs> he played for Liverpool. No, I didn't that. He, used to, he used to be with Jimmy Greaves yeah. on the show. What was his name? Yeah. John. See, you should have known that. I'm disappointed. <laughs> so from Billy Little, I then got Ian St. John. I think he signed from Motherwell. And we had a giant of a centre half in Ron Yates. He was, he was a colossus. I mean, when he signed Ron Yates and... What was that, El? <laughs> when he signed Ron Yates, Bill Shankly, when he had the press meeting, he says, gentlemen, I knew what all the press, he says, just walk round this man and admire him. Because he was huge. And he was, but, but Ian St. John was my second, really. But he was, my best, really, was, was Billy Little. Great stuff. All right, let's have a question from the audience, please. Uh, uh, Tim at the back. Tim? Wait for the mic, please, oh, well, Tim. Okay, you Thank don't you. fancy me shouting this time. <laughs> okay, no doubt I'll pass it to Paul on my left after this. Um, really quickly, obviously, Liverpool's very close to your hearts. 
Um, but as a manager, were there any certain places that you absolutely enjoyed kind of going to as an away manager? I mean, I'm sure that Cambridge has a fond place in your heart and probably does Bert Burton as well. Were there any places where you went, oh, great, I'm going there, you know, just a nice atmosphere and that sort of stuff? Or do you even think about that sort of stuff as a manager? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, got, I got one bit of advice from Peter Taylor. Peter Taylor, who was obviously Brian Clough's assistant, said to me, Roy, if you ever get the chance to manage on the South Coast, he said, do it. And I chose Torquay United. The most bloody difficult job <laughs> I've ever had. <laughs> to get anywhere near civilization, it was two hours drive from Torquay to Bristol. And then when you were playing in the Northeast or the Northwest or London, it was horrendous. You imagine the journeys home, they lasted forever. Um, but I did it, uh, and I enjoyed it. But in truth, if I was looking, I think I enjoyed my first experience in management. I was player manager at the time, but I wanted to come out of playing, and, and uh, I, I signed a centre half of black. Uh, you can, can you say black now? Is it colored? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, colored gentleman called Cookie, uh, Joe Cook. And he, was, he, he played for me when I pulled out of the team and didn't play. I also had a, a young lad called Jackson who was learning the trade as well. I tried to help him and, and, and Joe really helped him. But when I got those two together, I, I had a good team. And again, in my first season, we got promotion, which was great for me. I really enjoyed it. And I walked out of, of Bradford when we drew with... Manchester United at, um, at, uh, at, at, at home and we had the away leg to go to come uh, which was a great feat for us and it was great in terms of money and of course I know what happened here that when you got Manchester United the revenue that you made was, has, has been fantastic and it's helped improve the ground and everything else and certainly improve the, the corporate side of it for you which, which, is, which has been tremendous so Actually, drawing in Manchester United was a great draw for, for us. And uh, we, we drew with them at home, and then we lost away there. But we, I didn't go to the away game because I walked out on them. So I think that was probably the most, in, the most exciting for me, the fact that it was my first job. And I think the fact that I walked out of them, what a terrible decision. And I'd, if, you were, if you were Bradford supporters in here now, I'd be apologising to you and saying, I, I made a massive mistake, I shouldn't have walked out. And it would have been better for me to stay there and experience the job and experience what's going to happen in the future for myself and I should have stayed there longer. But if there's one place I do enjoy, and that's this place here. I had a lovely time here. I had some uh, nice people behind me. David Priest, I, I convinced him to stay here because he was going to go off to Leighton Orient, Orient with Tommy um, and probably be assistant for him there. I persuaded him, I took him and his wife out for a meal with my wife and persuaded, persuaded him, Priestley, to stay here. Sadly, he has died pretty recently and it's a sad death for him and for the family, obviously. But no, I enjoyed my time here. I think I, 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 I had a good working relationship for the first maybe three and a half years with the board. I fell out with the board uh, and they fell out with me. I didn't speak to them probably for the last 12 months, although I, I, I spoke to the chairman. I got on well with the chairman and I respected the chairman. Um, uh, uh, Reg Smart, but I thought the others, for me, were a complete waste of time. And I had the enjoyment of actually going to a board meeting and tell them exactly what I thought of them. Which I can't tell you now because the kids are here. But you can think about it anyway. You got a question, Paul? Yeah, you've been described to me as one of the nicest men that could be at Cambridge United. You don't, right? <laughs> How many players would agree with that? Uh, I, well, I, I had a, a good relationship with the players, and, and I think, I think what is sad is that we are selling, we are a selling club, and you're still a selling club. If you, if you got a superstar out there, they'll. He'll be swept away by, you know, a championship club, a premiership club, whatever it be. Um, and that's, that's, the, that's the reality that you have to live with. 
at, at a club like Cambridge United. And I knew that when I came here. Um, and I knew, you know, but I, I, what I would look back at that and I'd say, if we were able to retain Martin Butler, if we were able to retrain, retain Trevor Benjamin, if we were able to retain Zuma Rabi, who went off to Norwich, you know, you had, you had three strikers there who, who, who could have sort of taken us anywhere to, to, to any division. I, I think we'd have, we'd, have, we'd have gone up, we'd have improved. We'd, we'd have been able to, hopefully, the fact that we, you go up, that we'd have been able to spend more money. Uh, but that was never to happen, you know. We sold Martin Butler, the first to go for 750. Trevor Benjamin left for 1.25. And Zuma Abbey left for 300. So you're looking at round about, you know, two and a half million pound there that, that was brought in, really to keep this club going. And that's, that's, that's the way it was existing. And I'm pleased to say that, you know, you've had your bad times, you did drop down the divisions, you went out of the divisions, but hell, you know, you, you've had the, uh, the backing and, and it, it, it's, it's got to come from within the football club that you've climbed up out of that conference and got away from it and got this far. And, and I hope and wish you well that, you know, sadly with four games to go now before the end of the season, it's going to be a little bit tight. It's going to be difficult. All the other teams have... I've got to lose, and you've got to you've got to go on a on a great run. I hope it happens, but you know the best thing about this, you, anything can happen. And you're dead right; anything can happen in this game, and and, and it, it surprises. When you look at the Premier League and you see what's happening there with, with Leicester, it's something that maybe you could it could have happened to you, you know, and John Beck's day when when you were there, it, it it could quite easily have happened, and sadly it didn't happen. But you know, look what's happened there. Okay, we've got Elliot in a minute, but please, yeah, no, 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 you carry on, please, sir. Okay, so if you were Roy Hodgson, uh, which centre halves would you take with you in the summer? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I'd, I, I'd certainly, t I'd put stones in there. Whether I'd start with him at the moment, I think, I think, when you join the England squad and and maybe you're not exactly right, it. You know, I, 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 had, I had quite a few partners. Funny enough, the best partners I had were the older ones, and that's, that's Norman Hunter. Uh, and Norman used to say to me, don't you, don't you run away up there playing one-twos and uh, keep by me, because Norman, Norman was not the quickest. And I couldn't believe how fearful he was playing for England and worried about me going on a Jones and playing a one-two in midfield and carrying on and, and what have you. He said, Roy, don't leave me by myself. And this, this, <laughs> this, this, this is... Break your legs, buddy, and all went on to me. He's trying to bloody death of me leaving him. But uh, I, I, I probably had my best times with Norman, and I had my best times with with Bobby Moore, and of course Colin Todd got into the team, and I snapped my Achilles. But I think after that, when I came back, I didn't play. I, I had Emlyn Hughes, who was not a centre half, to be fair to Emlyn. I played with Emlyn on a couple of times, and I played with a couple of the Manchester United lads who. Sadly, I hate to say it, we're not at that standard. You know, what Norman and what Bobby gave you and what Toddy gave me was not there when I came, but when I'd, when I'd snapped my Achilles and I came back, the standard wasn't there. And it's about the standards. And I don't think at the moment we're particularly strong in that position, but I think we can probably get away with it. Um, and I think it's important, like I say, that Stones is there. And, I, I, you know, Jackie Elker, he's not the greatest, but I, I, I think he'll do, he'll do a job for you. I think of uh, Cahill, I think he'll do a job for you. I think Smalling at Manchester United will do a job, but they've, they've not really stamped an impression to, on any of the managers, I think, that they've had to make them be an automatic selection. So I think probably it'll be maybe Cahill and Smalling, maybe Jackie El could come in there, but I hope Stones gets a chance, and if he does get his chance, I hope he improves. And I think the experience of going away with an England team, even if he doesn't get a game, will do him the world of good for the future.